we have now seen uh, the application using iron and R valves in some industrial example. So, industry is very vast and there are many such case, cases that you can find. So, uh, for a mechanical engineering graduate who is having a full-fledged knowledge about fluid power systems, definitely it is an advantage to demonstrate himself in the automation process, in the low cost automation. Suppose if he learns little bit of programming, even at the complete automation level. But at least in the beginning, uh, low cost automation. So, he can be recognized in the industries for his uh, good mind and uh, efficiency and he can be given a priority within the industry. So, this, is, this has a lot of benefits. As an youngsters, you all have to cultivate the habit of studying to the depth and using the subject to its, its application. Means you have to take the subject to an application. So, for an example, I want to tell one very good example here out of the syllabus I am coming. Uh, during my service, I met a one guy called Parikh who is from the Gujarat. He has been paid 1.5 to 2 lakhs for just coming and advising something within the industry as an HVAC consultant. So, he used to come in the morning and advise how the fans and the air ventilation and moisture addition has to be done for the day, looking at today's condition. He will be paid around 2 lakhs, 1.8 to 2 lakhs per day, uh, per month. So, that means, why he has been given so much of money? So, he is using his subject, thermodynamic subject. So, he's under, he has a complete knowledge of uh, air. Air is surrounded by us. We have started with air only. That is why I am coming with this example. So, air is surrounding us, but this air has moisture. So, when you take this air into the room also, you have the same problem. You should know how much moisture is there in the air. And if you want to treat that air, you have to use some uh, devices to treat it and send it to the appropriate levels. So, especially in textile industries, uh, the uh, conventional air conditioning becomes costlier and we are adopting a HVAC humidification and, and ventilation system to do that, cooling aspects of the uh, plants. So, in such a cases, knowing the amount of air and also controlling the temperature within the room uh, without uh, making any deposition of the water particles on the rollers becomes an important task. So, for which he is using a thermodynamic chart, psychometric chart. So, he has applied his learning to a, an industry application. So, he becomes an advisor, consultant like that. In this field, many people are doing consultancy. So, even you all can learn it and uh, use it as an earning source. So, now there are many such examples. I am uh, trying to give one more example of an industry. So, people can use uh, two-way door control systems. So, in the two-way door control, opening and closing of the door of a warehouse. Warehouse is a storage room has to be controlled using a pneumatic cylinder under the following conditions. So, it is, it should be possible to either open or close the door using the first push button located at the outside the warehouse or it should be possible to open or close the door using a second detent type of push button located inside the warehouse. So, means from outside also it should be possible and from inside also it should be possible, open and closing. So, such a system has to be developed for an industry uh, warehouse. So, this can be done with the pneumatics. So, you have to take whether should I use a pneumatic or motors or hydraulics. So, appropriate selection of the uh, driving elements whether it is pneumatic driver or uh, hydraulics or motor driven. 
So, technology has to be uh, thought and then you have to think the design aspects of it and then apply it. So, now I will show you how this can be done. So, this is the circuit which is demonstrating that environment. You can have a two push buttons, one on the outside and on, on the other one on the inside, which is a detent type, holding type. So, if I show a symbol like this, this can hold the position. So, you press this, okay. So, air will come from here to here and you press this. So, any one of this, uh, if you have it, so the air will come here uh, there is an unlogic created between these two, this and this. And similarly, there is an one and wall uh, when in this position, in the conventional position. Already, this is in the normal position and this is also in the normal position. At that time also, you are getting the signal here to this wall. So, you are getting in one more signal here. So, means in both the condition when in pressed or without pressing, you have a enabler that any one of these signals are available here and that results into a uh, opening or closing of the cylinder, uh, uh, cylinder here moving the cylinder to and fro. There can be a, any number of such configurations which may be required in industry. If you take one more example, sensing with three sensors. For example, a workpiece in a stamping press. You consider stamping is done on a material. There is a press to do that, which a press is sensed by a three sensors. Normally, when you mount an object, it has to be in a level. So, to check the level, whether it is completely in the level. So, you can use some technique. So, normally you can have a multiple sensors and if the sensor shows the same contact at all the three places, then the table is leveled. So, similar kind of uh, thinking you can generate and you can use the pneumatic systems itself. So, now here we have assumed that uh, three sensors are being given at 120 degree and if all the three are pressed means the table is placed horizontally. So, taking that kind of an environment we have designed the circuit. So, uh, observe here. So, it is desired that the stamping operation should takes place only when uh, any two of the three sensors sensing the workpiece. So, means at least two sensors should be touched. So, then you can proceed with the work. So, we have a condition to do that. So, uh, the sensors here are not electrical type of sensors which are roller type of lever type, roller lever type of limit switches we call. So, you can use these switches and put it from the bottom side of the table and any of the two is uh, then you can assume that you can do a work. If uh, more than two is not sensed, then do not do it, you align it, you do a maintenance first. Okay? Develop a suitable pneumatic control, return motion of the press is obtained due to the activa activating the limit switch located at the extended position. Automatically when it extends, it has to actuate. So, like that you can do a stamping, stamping is nothing but like this. So, uh, but only when the sensors are being level, two of the sensors gives you signal that you can do. So, that kind of condition is been established here. So, in such a cases, what is important? What is important? You can draw a truth table. We also call it as a truth table. So, means logically in which are the cases you have to get an output. So, logically there are, uh, there are three sensors here. So, Similarly, I can say the sensors are A, A, B and C. There are three sensors here. So, logic here is at least two should be gives a signal. So, that means pilot signal is an output, pilot signal is an output. I draw my truth table. So, truth table is nothing but in which of the conditions I should get an uh, output signal. So, what are the conditions here? 
either A and B should be on means 2, A and B should be on, C is 0. So, means this is not sensing, but these two have already sensed. So, you get an output. Similarly, now A is not sensing, but B and C is sensing, then also you can get an output because two sensors should be sensed na, as per the condition. Similarly, B is not sensed, A is sensed and C is sensed, then also you should get an output signal. If all the three are sensed, if the all the three are sensed, it is very good. At least two has to be sensed, but all the three is sensed, it is very perfect. So, exactly good, 100 percent perfect. So, then we can say all the three are ok, then definitely an output should be ok. So, according to my truth table, these are the four conditions wherein I can get an output and few more conditions which I do not get an output that is if A is sensed other two are not sensed, other two are not sensed then I do not get a signal. If C is sensed and other two are not sensed then also I, I will not get the output. If B is sensed and other two is not sensed then I will not get the output. And if all of them is not sensing, this is out of scope, so no output signal. So, I can draw my truth table like this and using this truth table, I can create my logic. The same kinds of logics can be generated in PLCs also, okay. So, but we are trying to use the same logical conditions of AND and R conditions and trying to rig up a circuit for the same. So, this circuit demonstrate that condition taking the truth table, we have taken the truth table like this just if you observe A and B, yes output should be there, B and C output should be there. You, If you observe here, see here this is sensor A, this is sensor B limit switch, this is sensor C limit switch. So, now yeah, this is a source, source is connected to all the three uh, input uh, sensor elements which is which we have taken it as a roller sensors in this case, all are normally closed valves. So, when it gets pressed, the when it gets pressed means if I if it gets pressed, this is going to get connected. So, in this case now, this is also pressed. So, this and this pressed. So, what happens? One gets connected to two here, that will come here and here. So, see this condition now, we are supplying both sides input A and B to a valve, to a twin pressure valve that is a and valve. So, you are going to get an output to this. So, you have created one here. Similarly, now if you rub this, and see the other condition. So, the other condition is B plus C. So, B means this is your B, this is your C, I am not considering A now. So, B is now if it is pressed, B is pressed means this is pressed, one gets connected to two here and if C is pressed, one gets connected to two here. So, both the signal will come from here and as well as here that is B plus C. B plus C will come to this side again this is R valve na? it will move forward. So, that means there will be a signal to this R valve. When the R valve gets any input it gives an output. Na? So, ultimately it will go to next stage again it has an R valve. So, it will give an output. So, this is how I can create this is my second set of combination and the third set of combination. If the third set of combination is now uh, C plus A, what about if the first one and the last one? The first one is this and the last one is this, okay. First one is sorry, first one is this 
and the last one is this. So, that is uh, okay C plus okay this is B plus C okay we have come. So, C plus A okay correct this is A and this is C. So, here if you observe so C is pressed so this will get okay this is the this is the input and now A is pressed A is pressed so this will get closed and this will take this path to this wall okay so again this end wall both sides I am getting here because A is pressed and C is pressed so I am getting both sides uh, signal so once I get this signal, it generates an output that goes to an R, so you can get further. So, now in combination, what are the actual outputs that you can get through this val? So, this val is now, if you take uh, uh, this val, it is a 5 by 2 way uh, memory reset type of val. So, that means if you take out signals, uh, the cylinder will retract. To get forward, the logic is, logic is, a and B that is through this wall, B and C that is through this wall, C and A that is through this wall. So, now if all the three, all the three, let us observe the last condition in the truth table that is we have now this we have completed, this we have completed and this we have completed, correct? This we have completed, these three we have completed this three we have completed so output cases we have taken and the last output cases is all the three if you take all the three so now this all the three is pressed means this is pressed this is pressed so this is also pressed so all the three pressed so what happens one gets connected to two one gets connected to two, one gets connected to two. So, this will give signal to this, see. So, anyway, so this, this here can move here and here. Na? So, again you, will, you are going to get a, an output through this condition also. That means, any one of the table, true table conditions uh, which was shown earlier, you are able to uh, get the output here. So, all the four you can get the output, but you cannot get if these conditions are there. So, that means with this condition you are able to work. Okay? So, this is how logical elements are being extensively used to create logic in the circuits which helps you to establish your conditions, mainly understand the conditions are, for an example, I will tell you one joke here now. So, the conditions may be different for different situation. So, situations may ask for different conditions. I will give you some good examples now. Suppose you take a couple, married couple. So, both husband and wife are good, having a very good relation. Everybody says, whatever I have, you can enjoy, uh, I have kept some money in the bank. The same fashion, husband tells you, you can take any money and enjoy. So, no restriction here, correct? Na? So, that means, I can choose an R logic, go to bank with checkbook, one sign single signature. So, will enable the withdrawal of the cash, either wife can withdraw or husband can withdraw. So, that means R logic, if the relations are good. So, now for example, we have married, but forcefully we are staying together, but we do not have a very good relation. However, for the sake of society, we do not want to come out of the good relation, what we have done. So, we will stay as long as we can move like this. So, I have a money in the bank. So, then the condition may be earned. To withdraw a money, 50 lakhs I want to withdraw, husband 
has to request wife i need so much of money please give your signature and he also puts a signature means the bank is asking for some logics now so in turn if the logic is now connected to what relations or the conditions conditions are related to the application so like that within an industry so the conditions may differ depending upon the conditions you have to use uh, and or not all these gates not only this exclusive or gates are there okay uh, nand gates are there there are many such gates which we practice in the day to day life within industry environment also and take the benefit of the logic for the application so with this uh, i have conveyed you most of the examples which can be implemented at industry level within the industry after learning this subject this is most important don't learn the subject only for the sake of the exam so try to read something and omit in the exam and get some 60 70 or 80 depending upon your memory learn the subject with the depth to apply it if you are able to apply your mathematics you are through because today we are applying addition so if someone comes we are saying this plus this is this so we are applying it so it's useful so if you do not apply just in the exam to write 10 5 plus 5 10 and after that you you are not worrying about that uh, plus sign itself no use of it no use of the subject so please don't do that give your complete attention in the class as and when the class uh, syllabus goes to the uh, uh, down 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 to the higher modules because as we move the higher ladder uh, modules wise the depth will also increase so you have to take that you have to take that as engineers you cannot leave that so now uh, i'll be telling some other valves other than logical valves some other valves sir some other means what for example in the environment or in the application we also see something like this uh, when i visited a germany first time i saw that Uh, when we go to a fresh room all the lights gets on after some time but after leaving the fresh room when you come out of that after some time all the uh, fan exhaust fan and lights get switched so these kinds of things uh, i saw 15 20 years back itself so that means they have applied that in various levels at different places to get the benefit of it so that means we can need of a timer oriented operation you you should switch on after some time after you press after some time output should come on or sometimes you should delay the off you switch off and come but normally in the hotel rooms you can find this you switch off but till you come out of the room the lights will be on only because you have to lock the door so it allows you to uh, do all those activity and after giving some time it becomes off so th- that means delaying output off conditions so delaying output on conditions so all these conditions we call it as a timer oriented functions so that becomes also most important normally we deploy that in any applications that we see in the conventional day to day life also the same thing can be applied in the industry similarly one more cases may be pressure dependent i have told now time dependent other one is pressure dependent pressure dependent means how so for example i will give you one example of watch cases so if you see the watch cases of the one model it remains same height so no difference in the groove step height and all this how they do that have you ever thought of that how we can achieve that so definitely while you do a farming he must have applied some condition that 
if this pressure is reached you retract the piston back so that the groove height should be kept constant with respect to the fixture die and fixture assembly so that's how you can restrict the pressure you can restrict the pressure and once the pressure signals has been reached you retract it immediately to maintain the accuracy so industry accuracies with respect to respect to the example which i had given needs a pressure okay signal as a signal and retract at that time for example i will tell you your hand has to be pressed and held by some machine for some time in order to uh, make this hand okay ortho ortho problem say so that means i should know what is the pressure which is i am applying now and how many time i am applying combination of timer and pressure may be a requirement all these cases we can use additional elements called pressure dependent control elements and time dependent control con, uh, uh, delay valves or time controlled valves so now we will see that in the pressure dependent valves we have pressure sequence valves pressure relief valves and pressure regulator which reduces the flow of the pressure to the downstream side pressure sequence valves are like switches once the pressure is reached it gives a signal okay pressure relief valves are normally closed type of valves which opens and relieves the pressure when the set pressure is reached so pressure relief valve sequence valve signaling switches like thing this is safety kinds of things and pressure regulator which allows you to cut down the pressures as per the requirement for example my this finger has to be pressed with less pressure but this can withstand a more pressure so like that depending upon the condition i should be able to regulate my pressure and control and give the desired flow desired pressure in the downstream so all these valves are being extensively used in the pneumatics now in this slide i am showing you uh, the different symbols which are used in the pressure uh, sequencing valves sequence valves this is adjustable pressure regulating valve non relieving type is shown like this and adjustable pressure regulating valve with relieving type what is relieving and non relieving relieving in non relieving means it releases the air out little non relieving it won't release without releasing the air venting it out you can have a better control so you can observe that uh, here uh, adjustable pressure regulating valve with relieving type you can find one small change here if you observe it here you can find this that is a vent kind of thing which is provided on the valve so that means depending upon this our small changes will happen on the symbol which indicates that this is the valve if you are very good with the pneumatics you should know all the symbols once you see the symbol you should be able to tell which is the valve that okay so then you are ready for the industry so now sequence valve with external source so this is the external source so you can give the external source as a signal and once that pressure is reached uh, this is you are setting the pressure here and this is the signal if the signal pressure is equal to the setting then you gets the connection okay so that is the one and sequence valve in line this is in line from the line itself you are taking this this is from an external source you are taking this is from a internal internal pressure is taken to the control this has been taken like this so like that depending upon all these things the small small changes even if you see there are small changes within the symbols but it it is giving a different representation this is external source this is internal source this is relieving type this is non relieving type all are adjustable on the spring here shown arrows for all of them so all are adjustable type so now by using this combination of dcvs and any one of these conditions 
the walls can be manufactured. In such a condition, suppose if you take a sequence wall combination, so I am putting a DCV with one uh, this, that is this kind of thing, which is an external or internal, anything it can be. Okay? So, like this, you can take a combination together and make your com combination well to get the actual output desired or required by you. So, uh, pressure sequencing valves is essentially a switch on or off valve. A sequence valves generate a pneumatic signal if the sensing pressure is more than the desired set pressure. I am telling one by one whatever I have told. This generated output signal is used to control the moment of a cylinder by using it as a set signal or a reset signal to the final control valve. Used for applications such as bonding cylinders, clamping cylinders, I said na, bonding, clamping cylinders, okay, all these conditions to ensure desired minimum pressures are achieved. I want to ensure that the pressures are achieved. Like similar cases when I press, I want to assure that the pressure is achieved to the desired level here to get the step height of the watch case. So, in the same sense, I can use it in the forming operations if die, press and other elements are there. Other, otherwise, I can use a bonding, bonding cylinders, clamping also. I want to clamp it at one pressure with certain exact pressure. So, why clamping is so important is if the casted blocks are to be clamped, if you use a more pressure, it may press the object and as the casting objects are porous in nature, so the parts are porous in nature, it can shrink within itself when it is clamped and after you uh, take it out, it may expand again. So, again there is an inaccuracy in the machine can happen. So, appropriate clamping pressures are, are to be given in certain cases. I have seen such an example in one of the industry when we were doing consultancy. We were doing a fine boring operations for a uh, her, uh, her, hermetically sealed compressor uh, boring operation. Fine boring means you are already into a stage where your surface finish is like a mirror. So, when we do such kind of operations, so we used to clamp the object that is cylinder and then fine bore it within it. So, like this it has to bore and go and if you remove that component C, it should look like a glass for you. Internal cylinder bore has to look like a glass finish for you. In such a case, suppose if you have a problem of clamping, after you remove it out, the cylindricity of the bore will not be as per the norms. So, it, it will not be cylindrical sometimes. Even though glassy finishes is there, after inserting the piston and other assemblies, it can create a more noise. Now, Hitachi says or the, the Hitachi compressors in the industry says, in the night when you sleep, my compressor runs. When the compressor is running, I drop a pin. The pin noise can be heard, but not the compressor noise. So, that is the challenge they are taking. So, that means these are directly related to the machining operations. So, these are directly related to your pressures and speed that you are controlling while you process. So, these becomes very, very important. So, as I am going to the depth and depth of the fourth and fifth units now, I am coming to an applicational link. So, you sh it should enable you to understand the industry requirement. So, industry requires, certain industries required high precision components, micron level, surface level, so and micrometers are very high. So, like that, so uh, uh, very, very important operations, the, the requirement becomes more and more critical 
in such a cases if you are able to design meet that requirement you will be the first person you get a very good success in your life and industry within india needs such people now to come forward and take that now uh, i take up further with a pressure sequencing wall the pressure sequencing wall is shown here with a symbol so we have clubbed the this with a dcv so now i am giving you a, a, a pressure one to pressure from an external source to this so i am setting this regulator by turning the knob here and if the this pressure is more than this so then uh, this will become active and this gets closed and this gives a signal to the dcv to take this position and when this takes this position one gets connected to two and some operation will happen okay so that means i am taking a pressure signal here so now this is a pressure sequence well in the circuit i will try to show you the picture uh, how this valve works and also along with the circuit i want to explain this now observe this this is how the cut section view of the pressure sequence valve will look if you see here there is a knob spring and here is the some elements with the diaphragm this is a diaphragm element and this is your one two port from which you are giving a pressure okay as uh, and you are turning on the knob to some force level so when in the initial condition when the pressure from here is not equal to the setting pressure it will be like this but when the pressure starts increasing here so when it reaches the set pressure this will move this will move this will move and allow this pressurized air here to enter this section and goes to the two so i will show that motion here with the simulation just you can observe so what is the change here is this is bulged so observe the previous so this is like this and in the subsequent figure this is expanded now due to that expansion that is pushing this rod up observe this position here the rod is seated here and now here in this condition it is lifted and then there is a lift there is a lift which you have got here there is an opening passage that is allowing the air okay to travel to this section and from here to here to here to so that's how one gets connected to two when the set pressure one to reaches the spring set levels so this is how the pressure sequencing will give a signal to the dcv when the pressure is reached so now when the pressure here will increase for that i will demonstrate this with a circuit so take the circuit now i have used this valve the valve which i have shown here if you observe this circuit now we have used uh, the va the wall which we have shown in the previous slide okay which is now uh, has been connected here how this will help you to get that uh, application i'll be demonstrating now so now take a uh, condition of you are going to press for a watch case so that means you are pressing and when the pressure reaches taking the signal of the pressure so you are giving a signal to this to retract the cylinder means auto retraction will happen upon a set pressure is reached so that means forward condition forward how you will do take a 1s1 this is your air source frl unit so this uh, source is taken to 1s1 normally closed type here and another input is connected to a 5 by 2 way wall and the third one input line is connected to the uh, your uh, sequence wall sequence wall 1 port number 1 here so the port 1 is normally closed so means air will not go 
uh, from here to here unless and until you get a signal from this guy. So that means when this guy will signal, when this guy will signal, when you move forward and presses something, the pressure in this line starts increasing and taking certain amount of pressure, we have set it that here. So it reaches that pressure, this will give a signal to this. So that means upon pressing 1S1, you are making 1-4 port to activate and that results in connection of connection of this like this. So air will flow from this path because arrow direction and umbrella direction are opposite. So free flow, it will go to this uh, side of the cylinder, this side of the cylinder and it will move forward. But here when the watch case assembly is there, watch case, assume this, this is watch case, watch case is here, starts pressing this with a fixture, a die. Okay? So what happens when we start pressing this is there is a resistance to this motion. So that results in increased pressure in this region. There is an increased pressure in this region. And that pressure signal is taken through this line to one two port of this as a signal. So once this gets signal, immediately set pressure is there. Na? If it is exceeds that pressure, I say 10, 5, 4 bar, any, anything which I want to set, I can set it. So, when this reaches that, it gives a signal. So, when this gets signal, 1 to 2 gets connected here. So, we are going to make retraction now. Okay. So, this is the condition. I have got a signal to this, which in turn, I have got a continuation of the signal to this valve, 1 to 2 gets connected, so that will give a air to this port, 1 to port. So 1 to port of the DCV, I am getting 5 by 2 DCV, which in turn uh, keeps it to the same position, so the air will flow to this path and it retracts the cylinder automatically without any condition requirement. Because you have already met a condition, here the condition is a pressure requirement. If you have reached the pressure, step height is reached normally, only the other cases that you do not get a step height, maybe not machine related, then it may be material related. So for example, take the steel. So in the steel, if the sum lot hardnesses are different, then it may be different, you may get a sum error. Otherwise, if the same uh, lot of material with same setting of the machine same step height you have to get. So that is how we can achieve our accuracies within the industry requirement by using a pressure sequence signals. So it is an interesting case, in many other cases we need these kinds of interlocking, even in bonding applications. So we need these kinds of logics. So now uh, we will move on to the timers. As I said timers, when we say timer, we directly uh, go to electrical, need not be. I have seen a timers in the pneumatic component, I have seen a sensors in the pneumatic, which are pneumatic sensors, so in the industry, which has been used as a sensor. So that means, conventionally all the things are possible in any discipline. But the way we can do it easily depends upon the branch. So otherwise also the first clock which was developed was mechanical on sand, sand bag, from the sand bag it used to drop something kind of that. So conventionally everything can be done but logically if you try to adopt the different branches you can simplify it better. So that is how the different branches of engineering has become popular and today electrical, electronics are associated with mechanical doing wonders which is dominating the industries in paper industry where the pressures are to be uh, smoothly controlled, deep drawing process where again pressure uh, controls are very much essential because 
uh, even a small variation in pressure can rupture your sheets or metal sheets or papers which are being put up for the process. So, uh, now we move on to a timers, we get a timers in pneumatics. So, in the timers we get both normally closed type, normally closed type timers and normally open type of timers. Normally closed means once it reaches that time it gets operated. Normally open means uh, it is already on and you are making it to close. So, that means depending upon the application uh, to switch on or off or set a condition or take out from the condition is done with the timers. So, uh, usually pneumatic timers are on relay timers which are used to delay of signals is very commonly experienced in applications. Again the applications may be here bonding applications, bonding of two pieces. Okay. Normally open type uh, can be even used. So, normally open type are also used in signal kinds. So, normally open pneumatic times are used as a safety devices. Okay. So, like that we can say normally open type as a safety if both becomes on means it is giving a time uh, for the safety to ensure. So, that means you can use a normally closed or normally open type of timers, pneumatic timers, I should say pneumatic timers, not this. So, then how these pneumatic timers will look? So, how they are manufactured? So, again you can take it is a combination of some DCV valve with pilot signal like this given through an air, air, air only as a air as a signaling this DCV. So, but however, uh, the functionality of this side is you are allowing the air through a small control, fine control element. So, normally the valves are shown like this here. So, this is the precision flow control valve, not the normal flow. Normal flow control valve, we write it like this. Okay. So, this is variable. Okay. So, here it is also variable, but precision. Okay. We have put a precision flow control valve unidirectional precision flow control valve. So, with the help of this we are allowing the we are allowing the uh, small air to enter slowly into this chamber. So, you are trying to fill the say for example, you are trying to fill your uh, car tube tires types of cars if you take you are trying to fill the car tube tire tube using a small uh, air gun that. So, it takes more time na, to fill. So, like that if you control here small amount only will go and slowly this will get charged. When it charges to a particular level then the air will able to give a signal to this DCV. So, your valve gets changes its position. So, that means, so you can use uh, the concept of filling slow filling kinds of thing to the desired pressure to achieve a time. So, that means slowly I am filling the jar. So, it takes time. So, in the same manner we can use this. So, here we have shown on delay uh, uh, normally closed type and normally open type. This is a normally open type. This is normally closed type. So, this is how a delay can be considered off delay and on delay can be considered. So, there are a symbolics. So, now how uh, a normally closed and normally open timers are shown. Just look at this closed, this is normally open. Okay. So, the filling is you can leave this and fill it and then take signal. Okay. So, this is how uh, your timer will work. So, how this timer looks? Cut section of the timers if you take. So, you can find a spring and a seating arrangement with a seal here with uh, a, an inlet port 1 okay, and this is your 
2, port 2 and this is your port 3. This is your 1, 2 that is uh, uh, the this one okay this is this port okay. So now as you connect this and you are allowing this uh, passage and controlling this passage with precision small amount of air gets filled slowly in this chamber and that results into creating a pressure here and you are setting a pressure uh, uh, one set pressure here and as it reaches it can vary. So the knob setting will allow the time to control. So now in the next slide I have simulated this. So when this gets charged, so one gets connected to two, you can see that with simulation here. Just see here, now it has been connected. So see the observe the changes, it is not connected now, okay, not connected. So now when this becomes dark blue, it presses this down, observe this spindle positions here. So this is on top now, when it is pressed down here in this slot. So you are creating a change here, that is creating a gap here, which in turn connects the ports. So this is how, but to fill to this pressure, we need a time, that is how a time can be adjusted. Now how do we use this in the circuit part? So if you observe this, I have taken an example of uh, a, a, taking the cylinder forward, take this example, for example I will give you an example of you are taking a component basket, component basket in which small small parts are there, you are dipping that in a chemical bath for oil and uh, uh, removal of oil and dust particle from the component. So it has to be kept for a certain number of hours or minutes based on the chemical requirement. Reaction has to happen on the surfaces of the parts so that all the oil gets removed out of it. So it takes a time, chemical process again. So we can set such time. So means dropping it down, dropping it down, assume this is vertical now. If you move forward, that is similar to dropping it down. Now the parts are kept in the basket and within the chemical, I leave it for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and then once the degreasing is done, oil is removed, I retract it back. So retraction has to happen after a set time. So observe here, the logic taken like this, source, FRL unit, inputs are taken to these three valves. So uh, the first wall is 1S1, manually operated push button input element, 1S2 is this, it is connected here. So that means when it, uh, when is it at retracted position, cylinder when it is in the retracted position, this is pressed, okay. So that means when it is pressed, one gets connected to two, if the operator presses, you get an unlogical condition met and that results in an input to uh, final control element uh, 1 V3. So 1 V3 will connect the air to 1 to 4 and air will go here, it moves forward. So you will get the forward motion of the cylinder. Now to retract, I cannot retract immediately because see this, it will go and presses 1 S3, presses 1 S3, this will press once the cylinder moves forward here, but after pressing the air will go here, but the air cannot go directly, so to the DCV, control DCV here. So instead of that it passes through a final flow control valve, a small orifice is there which is allowing the air slowly, so to fill this chamber, to fill this chamber it takes a time. So after it gets filled, so the, this gives a signal to this. So this is the time elapsed time. So you are allowing the time. So after this gets pressed, it remains in that position for a time to which you have turned this knob to fill this vessel to a certain set pressure. So that means that is the time you can delay it to retract. So that is how the operation of the cylinder will 
takes place means the retraction is delayed. Why delay? Why delay is because of this valve configuration. So, this is how you can understand. So, now this is how you can use your circuit in different conditions. Okay? So, this is one more application of a pneumatic uh, timer. So, you can create many such applications in clamping applications. We have used a timer. So, input signal uh, S1 is pressed, you get a signal. PV is pressed with um, by the operator, means if it is already at its back end and operator presses, you get an input signal and that in turn moves this forward, moves this forward and retraction retraction is taken here to this okay and it retracts uh, when a source gets connected with certain press pressures okay and you give a retraction signal and you give a output so means and logic this also should be there and this also should be there to move it forward what about retraction retraction is now uh, through a spring okay so, in clamping applications, we can make use of these kinds of uh, combination of uh, both timer oriented circuit along with a conventional logic to create a clamping conditions. So, stamping again you can say stamping, clamping all these operations can have a, a combination of these kinds of thing. If you read it here, he is saying 20 second is the delay that I want to create. Like that, if you say you can create a delay, MC timer has been put here. Okay? So, clamping device circuit combination. So, there can be a combination of timers with certain time requirements as per your statement. All these, all these circuits are related with your statement, how much time you want to keep it in, in certain conditions like that. So, here he said, here some time he has given and here some time he has given. So, for both the conditions he is giving a timing conditions along with some signaling element. So, this is a two hand safety block which has been created for a uh, this. So, uh, again there are a logics wherein we use a timers, this is the timer which has been used. Okay? There are many example cases, I am limiting this example to one or two, because uh, you can uh, learn this in different books, there are books with different uh, this. Uh, Festo is having their manuals, you can refer to Festo manuals there, you can get multiples of such uh, timer and uh, timer examples for different industrial applications. So, with this uh, there are uh, many cases where you can make use of with conditions, you can develop your pneumatic circuit with pressure and timer requirements as conditions. So, uh, thank you. With this, uh, we are coming to the end of uh, uh, unit 4, wherein applications of uh, different valves, control valves, DCVs will come uh, and uh, applications of timers will come and applications of pressure link circuits will come. So, all these incorporations can be done uh, uh, here, twin and uh, or wall combination, only or and wall applications have covered. So, with this kinds of examples what we have covered, you can continue uh, with any number of such examples from the books. Uh, it is better to refer industrial uh, handbooks like Festo manuals and other things to learn better. Thank you.